The magnificent city of gold, El Dorado, has piqued the interest of millions over the past 400 years. From conquests and expeditions by men seeking riches beyond their wildest dreams, even now to a lot of modern pop culture, El Dorado has inspired books, movies, comics, TV shows, and even video games in just the past few decades alone. But where exactly is the lost city, and more so, where does the legend come from? On this episode of Real Lore, we'll be discussing just that. El Dorado, the city of gold lost in legend. So sit back, stay tuned, and as always, welcome to the Lore Lounge. During the early 16th century, Europeans were spreading out across the ocean after the discovery of the New World. They set sail in search of a new life and new wealth. It was during this time of gold and greed that the legend of El Dorado was starting to come alive. With more travel came more stories, stories of a lost city flowing with gold. This was enough to convince many Europeans they could be great adventurers and even conquerors. This myth, and with it, the endless hunt for gold led many to exploit these new lands for their own gain. There were many tales of El Dorado in many different lands, and over time the legend changed locations so much that it simply became a story of untold riches somewhere in the Americas. However, when the Spanish explorers reached South America in the 1600s, they heard tales of a tribe living high up in the Andes Mountains in now modern-day Colombia. Much like any great discovery in history, there is always bad accompanying the good. And in this case, although humanity grows and becomes more connected, sometimes it's at a cost. For instance, in 1540, Gonzalo Pizarro was made the governor of the province of Quito in northern Ecuador. Now shortly after taking lead in Quito, Gonzalo heard rumors from the natives of a valley far to the east, rich in both cinnamon and gold. So he banded together over 300 soldiers and almost 4,000 natives, and in 1541 led them eastward down the Rio Coca and the Rio Napo. Now accompanying Pizarro on this expedition was his lieutenant Francisco de Oriana. Attacks from hostile natives, hunger, and disease wiped out most of his soldiers. Ultimately, Gonzalo had to step down. But before doing so, he ordered Oriana to continue downstream where he eventually made it to the Atlantic Ocean. Now this expedition found neither cinnamon nor gold, but Oriana is credited with discovering the Amazon River. The Amazon River, which got its name from the group of female warriors that attacked Oriana and Pizarro on their journey down the river. So now 50 years later, in 1594, Sir Walter Raleigh of England made his first of two attempts to find El Dorado. In 1595, it was rumored that El Dorado could be found at Lake Parime in the highlands of Guyana. So Raleigh set sail in hopes of discovering the lost city, and in doing so, he established an English presence in the Southern Hemisphere, and he created an English settlement in the land of Guyana. Although unsuccessful in finding El Dorado, his will remained and he would try again. In 1617, Raleigh returned to South America with his son in hopes of finding El Dorado. However, his son was killed in a conflict with the Spaniards, and Raleigh did not find El Dorado on his second disastrous expedition. Even more so, upon his return to England, he was executed for disobeying King James' orders to avoid all conflict with the Spanish. Now, much to the contrast of Europe, in South America, the myth of El Dorado was never really a place. El Dorado translates, in English, to the Golden One. But in South America, it was also called El Hombre Dorado, the Golden Man, or El Rey Dorado, the Golden King. Now as far as the legend goes in South America, El Dorado was much less a location as it was an actual person or person. Now these names were given by the Spanish to the gilded leader of the mysterious Muisca tribe. Now going back a bit, in 1537 it was these stories of El Dorado that drew the Spanish conquistador Jimenez de Caseda away from his mission of finding a land route through Peru and to head down to the Andean territory with his army of 800 men. This was one of the first expeditions that spawned virtually all others throughout this region. Caseda and his men ventured deeper and deeper into these strange territories where many lost their lives. But what Caseda and his men found astounded them. The discovery of the Muisca people. Even more so, the gold working of the Muisca was like nothing they had seen before. The techniques used in forming the gold were foreign and brand new to the Europeans. The Muisca people dedicated 50% of their gold to offerings. Well actually, a lot of it was an alloy of gold, silver, and copper called tumbaga. It was highly coveted not for its monetary value, but for the spiritual connection to deities that it yielded to the Muisca people. Gold did not hold much worth as a currency, but it was a staple to their religious practices. After the death of a previous leader, the Muisca people would start a succession of power to the new Golden One or Zipa. 
This process involved many rituals. One of those rituals would have the new king be brought to Lake Guatavita where he would be stripped naked and covered in gold dust. He would then be placed upon a highly decorated raft along with his attendants and piles of gold and precious stones. The raft would be sent out to the center of the lake where the new king would wash the gold dust from his body as his attendants would throw the pieces of gold and precious stones into the lake. This ritual was intended as a sacrifice to the Muisca's god. To the Muisca, El Dorado was not a city, but the king at the center of this ritual, also called the Gilded One. While El Dorado is meant to refer to the Gilded One, the name has now become synonymous with the lost city of gold and any other place where one can quickly obtain wealth. Now in 1545, conquistadores Lazaro Fonte and Hernán Pérez de Caseta attempted to drain Lake Guadavita. Their suspicions were heightened when the lake was being drained and they discovered gold littered amongst the shores. They worked for three months but were unable to drain the lake enough to collect the treasures hidden below. Now more attempts to drain the lake were conducted later on and again various pieces of gold were found amongst the shore. But the treasure at the depths of the lake still was unattainable. It is believed that the lake could contain somewhere around $300 million in gold. Eventually, the attempts to collect the riches were halted when the Colombian government declared the lake a protected area in 1965. Nonetheless, the search for El Dorado continues, even without the ability to search Lake Guadavita. Now, all the legends surrounding El Dorado, the Andes, and the Muisca tribe's sacrifice of great treasures have evolved into a current tale of El Dorado, the lost city of gold. However, many people still believe in the mythical city's existence and will continue to hunt for it for years to come. And as the legends continue, the expeditions will fan out farther and farther, no longer being bound to Colombia and the Andes Mountains. These expeditions now span many areas of present-day Latin America far and wide. And with many men dreaming that one day, El Dorado will pass its unspent fortunes down to them and mark their place in history forever. Thanks for watching everyone, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay on top of our weekly uploads. Also, leave a comment below with what you guys want to learn about in future episodes, as we'll be continuing our series on real lore. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll see you next time in the Lore Lounge. Thank you.